All right, guys, just starting another restoration project. Very cool teak rocking chair, probably 1950s. Um, really cool piece. Uh, it enter all the uh, upholstered panels. There's an upholstered back and an upholstered seat, and they lock in sort of like the Danish furniture often does, the lounge chairs. Um, but it's hidden by upholstery, so it's kind of cool. You just sort of, it took a second to figure out exactly how this came apart. But nice and easy. Now I'm just taking out these screws here, one there, one there, and I'm going to be uh, just disassembling it as much as possible because it's going to need to get re-glued. These joints, like this joint right here is separating and uh, obviously the arm here, the arms are coming out. So I'm just going to disassemble it uh, and then strip all the parts and then re-glue everything, clean and re-glue it. So um, yeah, it should be a pretty cool piece when it's all said and done. It's a, it has a very cool sculptural shape to it, the rocker. All of that's very cool, so uh, here we go. All right, I just want to show you really quick. Um, there's obviously two sides to this I'm disassembling. If I tape it or write on them when I go to strip it, I'm probably going to lose any of that. So I'm using these uh, these punches. You can get a cheap punch set like this. And I'm just putting a one here. Um, it's very subtle, but it's inside where the glue joint will be. So it's it's just very subtle, but I'm going to put a one on on uh, everything that goes on one side and the two that goes on the other side. So I'm doing that. That's one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, and then the other is if you haven't heard of one of these, this is a dead blow hammer. Um, this works really well for knocking furniture apart. Um, the reason is, is, I don't know if you could hear it, but there's sand inside the head. And so when you hit, it just sort of has a really solid hit. Um, and so you can tap things apart. The, the sand inside carries the momentum and you get a really good hit versus like the rubber mallets that can bounce. Uh, and obviously you don't wanna use a hammer uh, for it or anything hard. So this works really good because it just sort of hits and stops. So um, gives you a nice solid hit on joints to knock them apart. Uh, so I highly recommend a dead blow hammer uh, you can get this anywhere. I think this one's Home Depot, but you can get them anywhere. And then um, also these punch sets are really handy for numbering things when you know you're going to be stripping or doing something that you can't use tape or labels. This is a good way to do that. So just some quick tips for you. All right, so these are the little secrets you find about a piece. Um, this is the screw that was in this hole. Number one, it's a brass screw. I would never recommend using a brass screw somewhere like this if, if you uh, can you know if you can avoid it brass is very soft it'll bend uh, and I'll show you this is what screw was in the other holes it's a big steel screw uh, much larger head on it so you can see here um, if I can just lay them on the wood here you can see the uh, the difference a long skinny and then this one's kind of a fatter chunkier screw and they were all like that so this is the only oddball. So someone did a little repair and threw that in there, but we're gonna replace that, try to find one to match the originals. Um, because brass is not great for um, for something like that. You want something a little stronger. That's a thin screw too, so uh, we're gonna replace that. The other thing I wanna point out is that whoever had repaired this at some point used white glue, uh, like wood glue. And you would think that's okay, and it's not horrible. Um, I mean, wood glue is better than uh, other glues that some people may use. I've seen pretty much every glue used under the sun. Um, but the problem is it's not very reversible. This has to be heated and really picked off, and it's it's hard, it's a little messier. Uh, when I re-glue this, I'm gonna use hide glue, uh, which is a little bit more true to what it would have had uh, on it, most likely. And so I'm gonna use a hide glue, it's reversible, it can be heated and the joints can easily be taken apart and cleaned and re-glued in the future. Uh, so it's it's nice for maintenance sake and for the, the longevity of the piece. Uh, wood glue is readily available, it's what people kind of jump to. Um, epoxy is another option for, for hard breaks and things that you really need structurally sound, but I, I don't recommend that um, in cases like this uh, where it's kind of a joint that's more than likely going to need attention down the road so um yeah so i'm going to use high glue someone used wood glue now i've got to clean that up one thing i wanted to mention too is um you know it's very important to clean the joints uh, some people kind of cut a corner here if, if there's a situation where you can't clean a joint or you can't clean a, a, a repair 
that had already been done and there's old glue that's when epoxy comes into play because that'll kind of bond with just about anything but i like to take and um just gently scrape as much of the glue off the surface off a little bit off the spin um the dolls you don't want to take too much material off because you don't want to loosen the fit too too much you kind of want it to stay tight so i just sort of do that uh and then what i'm going to do is when i strip this i'm going to use a product called qcs and um, it helps to help you know dissolve glue a little bit too so having these exposed joints i might be able to even sort of scrub the uh, dowels and and uh, use a wire brush and try to clean any glue off just to make it raw wood again uh, so you'll get a good joint i'll drill out the holes that they go into uh, so that they're clean and ready to uh, receive that and so it's wood to wood that's the best way to glue a joint again but uh, if you can't do that, then going to an epoxy would probably be your best bet after that. All right, so here are the parts. I just have them in our strip tray, but I'm gonna do them by hand, sort of how you would do them if you were doing this project. I'm using a product called QCS. Um, this is actually a product that we uh, developed. Uh, it's under a different brand. If you're on Instagram, you could follow Stripwell. It's at Stripwell is the handle. Um, but it's a, it's a, a non-toxic, biodegradable, non-flammable, stripper uh, and it works great especially on this sort of danish uh type of finish um, but on a lot of vintage finishes we call it the vintage finish remover um, so it's it's qcs quick clean and safe and uh, what's awesome is you can kind of go barehanded with it you don't even have to really be concerned about fumes or anything like that so it, it's really a um just very helpful especially if you're a diyer doing a project like this and you're in a confined space uh, you don't have to be as concerned uh, with towels combusting or issues with that and touching it uh, you can still wear gloves just to stay clean I recommend that because everyone's skin is different but uh, I'm just gonna spray it comes in a spray bottle I'm gonna spray all of the parts and I'm just gonna let them sit and let the QCS work um, and then I'll come back and wipe off the uh, all the old buildup and residue all right so there you go I'm just letting this sit now What's, what's awesome again is I can touch this, put on my hands, look. It's just, it, it won't burn your hands. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. Uh, so it's cool that you can strip and get something like this clean, but it, you don't have to be concerned about your health. And that's a big thing. That's one of the reasons why we really wanted to develop this. So it's cool. So we're gonna let this sit and we're gonna let that do its thing and go do something else, come back to it, and uh, the finish should kind of wipe right off and really clean and make the rest of the process easy. All right, so this is some QCS in here. It looks pretty nasty. Uh, this is old. We've used this a bunch of times. What's great about QCS is if you can capture it, well, like all this runoff, if you can capture that, you can reuse it. It's, it it'll last. It, it doesn't evaporate, so you can uh, reuse it. So I can recapture here, and uh, I'm gonna use that to scrub the surface here. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm using on this, in this case, 4 steel wool. And you can see all the, the grime there. And I'm just gonna lightly scrub it. It's hard to do one-handed, so I'm gonna go off camera for one second and just scrub it. But it'll literally take me about, I don't know, five seconds to do it. Hold on one second. All right, so there you go. I just literally took about five, 10 seconds, scrubbed it down, then I just wiped it down with a uh, towel. And um, that's down to bare wood. It's just well, QCS has sort of a an oily um, an oily look as it's drying. It won't contaminate the wood if you're wondering. I mean, some people worry about me saying the word oil, and then you know what happens later when you go to finish it. Uh, if you it won't it won't contaminate the wood. Plus, you're going to sand it, and uh, I usually will wash this with a little water too. You don't have to, but I will go over this with water just to get any residue off. But again, it's not going to contaminate the wood. It might weep out or bleed out a little a little longer than like a methylene chloride type stripper or a store-bought stripper might. So you may need to give it a, an extra day or so just to sort of dry out. So keep it in a warm area if you can and let it just sort of weep out and then just wipe it down with some water. But uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It works awesome on, on uh, the Scandinavian type furniture like this. Uh, with these kind of oiled finishes, it washes it right off and uh, prevents a lot of excess um, sanding and, you know, scraping and all that. It just gets it super clean so you could just do a light sanding and uh, move right on to oil. So there you go.
All right, guys, I'm back with this uh, Danish rocker. Here's the two sides. Glued them back together yesterday. Didn't actually get any um, footage of it. I totally forgot. Uh, so I just wanted to show you sort of how uh, we clamped them back together, how I clamped them back together. First of all, cleaned all the joints. Pretty much every joint on this chair on, on these two sides has been re-glued. Cleaned out all the holes, cleaned up every doll, every joint, um, got it back together. One interesting thing here is you'll see um, this is the a joint here, right? This area right here. So it's one piece that comes and connects to the other that goes down here. That makes up the rocker. It's kind of a cool, re almost reverse rocker. Um, this one we couldn't get together any more than that. There's a little bit of a gap. Uh, it's tight in the back and then up here it's tight here and here so you couldn't pull that together anymore but this one was a little different so what we had to do was and you can't really see in there but that joint was opening up but it did have uh, movement so what we had to do was using these two clamps here uh, clamp that down really good and then use C clamps and what that does is it draws in it gives it something to, to clamp to because clamping on a curve like this is very tricky so that's just one way you can do it if you have these kind of clamps in your uh, shop or around to your house if you're if you're doing it out of your house pick up a couple if you don't um, but you can torque these down pretty tight and then use that as a nice flat surface to, to pull in and so that joint came together um, much tighter than it was prior so that was just one little tip there uh, that that came came along the way uh, as we were gluing these but other than that pretty straightforward cleaned up all the joints got it all re-glued using hide glue which is reversible but also strong um, but down the line it can be restored and joints can be tapped apart and uh, cleaned up very easily so now that this is all glued together we're gonna uh, i'm gonna get this uh sanded and any puttying or any filling that has to be done i'll do that next but uh, that's the latest with the chair the rocking chair here all right guys there she is um the middle panels the seat in the middle back the back area are upholstered and they are at the upholstery shop now, so I don't have those to show you. But pretty much the only cross connection, other than these lock in here, just like a lot of the uh, Danish and Scandinavian furniture, it, you know, would come apart. And the only mechanical sort of fastener that holds the sides together besides those panels is this uh, cross piece here, which has screws on the exterior. So you would take that out and uh, disconnect the back and the seat, and you would have a flat pack rocker. Um, so it's looking great. Just have to do the final sanding on it, some final repairs, fill some gaps, and just kind of uh, get it right. But uh, it's coming along pretty sweet looking chair. I love those. I love that that whole rocker shape. That's pretty. It's pretty cool. Um, just a neat design. So there you go. It's coming along. All right, guys, getting ready to put some finish on this uh, Danish rocker. Uh, in previous videos, I've shown this, and I'll show it again. This is the the oil that I prefer here at the studio for these kind of pieces. Uh, this is the Waterlox sealer and semi-gloss finish. Um, that can work as the sealer and the finish if you want a sh more of a sheen. Uh, if you want to go a little duller, which I usually do, I'm going to go to a satin top coat at the end. But uh, I'm going to apply this using a spray gun and then um, just sort of wipe it off once it has absorbed in as much as it can. And let it dry and then from there go on to subsequent uh, coats so using water locks and I'm gonna go ahead and get that first coat of oil on today all right guys so there's the first coat of oil um, that's soaking in what I'm gonna do is once I feel good about um, just that it's kind of absorbed in as much as it possibly can uh, I'll wipe it dry and then tomorrow I'll start building um, top coats over that but I just want to get a really good uh, soak in first coat uh, to get a good bond and really seal that wood so there you go gonna wait now um, let it set in wipe it off and then let it let it dry overnight all right guys just wrapping up this Danish rocker uh, I'm gonna give it just a rub down now the final rub down what I do is four oat steel wool and um, I use a wool lube um, by Mohawk I actually have it right here let me reach and grab it this is the very old <laughs> very old bottle of my wool lube uh, it's great you put that on some 4 steel wool go with the grain and just rub out um, all the surfaces and it makes it feel very silky smooth so this has all been uh, finished oiled and again we used water locks oil on it um, which gives it a little bit more of a build a little more sheen and now I'm gonna give it the rub down and that'll be it all right so all I've done is poured a little of the wool lube onto the steel wool and now I'm just going to see here just rub with the grain and you're gonna see it kind of it kind of froths up a little bit you can also cut this with some water 
um, and kind of dilute it a little bit. I use it just sort of straight, but you're just gonna rub all the surfaces and then wipe it really clean. And that is it, that's the process. So I'm gonna go over the whole thing, uh, all the ins and outs, get it nice and smooth. And I'll show you the finished product. All right, so there I rubbed it down with the um, wool lube. And what I like when that when I do that, uh, what, what I like is that it kind of dulls down the finish to a nice um, kind of vintage look. I mean, a lot of times when you re-oil pieces, they either look too um, raw, you know, not fed, the wood looks kind of dry, or they can look, you know, overly finished and too new. So with this uh, process, I really like the way that it comes out. It's kind of sad that we don't have the inserts to put in to show the uh, the final, final product, but uh, that gives you a sense of, you know, the final piece there, and obviously the upholstered panels will go in and it'll really come together. But thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and uh, check out all of our videos as we post them, and good luck with all your restoration projects. Keep uh, Keep checking out what we're doing. Thanks so much.